Hello everyone and welcome back. I've got a pretty interesting video for you today. It's a little bit of a change from modeling miniature figures. Today, as you can see, uh, I've got a few lessons to pass along from painting up my first miniature tall ship. The tall ship in question today is HMS Indefatigable, a frigate from the Royal Navy box set for Black Seas, produced by Warlord Games. It's a pretty nice little plastic model with some cardboard and paper attachments and accoutrements as you can see, and it comes with its own thread for rigging, which is an adventure, let me tell you. I'll get into a little more detail on that in due course, but for now let's move on to just constructing the miniatures. This isn't a particularly arduous task, Warlord Games have made it quite easy, but if you are new to modeling these sort of uh, plastic models, then hopefully this will give you an introduction of the tools you want to use and some basic techniques that could help you along the way. After that we'll go on to lessons involving the painting of this model and assembly of rigging, sails, flags, that kind of stuff. When you choose to build these models, you'll find uh, quite a few different items included in the box. There's thread for rigging, sails on cardboard, little plastic rat lines, which I actually didn't use for reasons I'll get into later, and a full sheet of paper flags that you can use in your rigging. Again, there's a bit of an issue with this, but I'll get to that later. For the actual initial construction though, all you need are the, if you have the Royal Navy box set or other metallic bits, the metal finely cast bits for detailing your ship, the plastic sprue, and the well-detailed instruction sheet. As far as tools for yourself, a little metal file or some sandpaper, and some flush cutters are highly recommended. Digging into the actual plastic on the sprue isn't that difficult. If you do have flush cutters, just put the flat part against the plastic that you're trying to cut out, and then take careful snips against all of the sprues. The idea here is to remove the plastic pieces of the ship without cutting away any extra from them. If necessary, leave a little bit of sprue on the actual part you want to use, for example the master hull of the ship, because you can sand that down afterwards. Whereas if you uh, cut too close to the ship, or you're not using flush cutters and you dig into them, it's a little harder to fill that in afterwards. If you do wind up with some gaps that you want or need to fill, you could use a simple putty like uh, green stuff, uh, the epoxy putty that I used in my recent video on painting Warhammer 40,000 test models, to fill those gaps. If you do want to use that uh, and you've never used it before, feel free to take a look at that video on Warhammer 40,000 models. I've got some little introduction to how to use the putty uh, effectively on miniatures there. In the case of Black Seas models though, they're fairly well laid out on the sprue and cutting them away without causing any damage shouldn't be too troublesome, hopefully. If you do end up with some leftover pewter, for example from the metal bits here on Indefatigable, uh, you can collect them off to the side. I've got a little jar here where I keep pewter bits because I try melting them down and recasting them every once in a while as a little bit of uh, fun on my part. With all of the bits taken off, you're probably going to have just a little bit of an unevenness or a rough edge where they were cut away from the sprue. Going in with a metal file for the metal bits, or uh, sandpaper for all the bits, can help you smooth that out significantly. I always recommend washing miniatures as well when cut away from the sprue, metal or plastic. Just use some lukewarm soapy water, give them a rinse, and then dry them off afterwards. This helps remove any demolding materials from the surface and helps paint and glue stick to them. For actually assembling the miniature, you can just follow the instructions included in the box, add a little bit of super glue here and there. I use gel super glue because it dries a little slower and helps you sort of position things in place, as you can see with these ship's boats. A set of tweezers are also very useful for that reason. When it's assembled, some of the surfaces may be rough, so just go ahead and sand them. In this instance, my ship was rocking back and forth when sitting on the table, but after a little bit of sanding, it was perfectly fine. With the model actually ready to paint now, uh, you're probably going to want to use some sort of painting grip to hold it up. I have a video on making these cheap painting grips on this channel if you want to use them, but uh, any sort of painting grip will do as long as it lets you paint all the way down to the edges of the hull since these sit flush on the table. If you've used yellow paint for painting miniatures before, you probably sympathize here, but painting a yellow hull for this Royal Navy ship was extremely frustrating. I started out by trying to apply it with my airbrush, and I got okay coverage, but I figured, oh, maybe I'll add some more definition by using the bottoms of this old Citadel wash I have. I don't know if it was the age or what, but the actual wash, uh, it laid on very cloudy and messy, and this is kind of one of the lessons with yellow is that uh, yellow is a very weak color and it's often very thin in terms of paint consistency so it's hard to cover things with it and once it's covered with something else it's gone. Um, the end result was that yeah I guess there was planking texture and I was thinking maybe I could use that on the upper decks at least but the sides of the ship weren't even remotely yellow nor were they looking like raw wood which might have been acceptable I suppose for the period. 
This slow dry blending gel I was hoping to use to thicken up my yellow paint and help me apply more and more of it onto the surface since my yellow paint was so thin. Um, but of course that didn't really work here. Uh, the idea is to paint sort of that single line on the hull yellow and then get black above and below. I guess that's the scheme I'm going for here. But boy did yellow not want to go on over top of this brown. There's a couple of lessons here in terms of painting things with yellow. Number one is that uh, you're going to, no matter what, have to put on multiple coats in order to get any sort of coverage. Um, it's always going to be a little thin, but in this case this was just trying to use cheap paints. So lesson number two is, as far as yellow paint in particular is concerned, you kind of get what you pay for. Look at this thin mess, uh, that was the first coat, and part of that was trying to use the uh, the slow drying medium. On the one hand it made it a little thicker on the brush, but on the other hand by increasing the amount of medium relative to the actual amount of pigment in my paint, because obviously it was very thin, it was not a pigment rich paint by any means, I ended up with just an even thinner mess. So while yes it had enough consistency to sit on my brush and not just flow into the recesses of the ship, it did not have enough consistency to actually cover the ship. So lesson number two, use more expensive paints. Here I got some Vallejo paints that I had sort of in reserve. One's a medium flesh tone, one's a deep yellow. By mixing the two of them I get a warmer yellow that's also a little thicker because even Vallejo's yellow is kind of thin. But by mixing the two you get this warm thicker color you can work with. For the actual black parts of the hull, I didn't go with straight black because straight up black is a fairly uncommon color in nature and just going with that on a model I thought would look too stark, especially in contrast with the yellow. So I used a bit of an off black, just lightening it with a little bit of white. To wash over the model now, I still wanted something to pull out some detail, so I mixed my own wash using some black ink and some brown ink from this Dr. PH Martin set, Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver, and just some water applied with a pipette. The idea is to have a very thin wash, with the Airbrush Flow Improver taking away the surface consistency so it doesn't leave tide marks on the model. I've got a little tester around here of wood from a broken... Uh, painting grip, and I just apply some of that to it to make sure it's at the right consistency and giving the right color. Having something with a little bit of texture like this and some colors that you can sort of overlay your wash on top of to see the effect is super useful when you're trying to mix your own wash at home. I've seen some people use uh, dish soap or uh, floor cleaner and stuff like that to break up the surface consistency as well. Uh, I can't vouch for that, I've never tried it. I have an airbrush so I had the flow improver so I use that for my washes. And in this case I'm going to apply it fairly judiciously, not really on the yellow areas except very lightly around the guns themselves, and try to keep it to the decks because the upper decks, well, they're going to be a little dirty and wet anyway, and I do want those planks to show on the finished product. It's, uh, it's definitely a balancing act when using this kind of stuff. You can see immediately once it's put on the yellow, it darkens it immensely. And it, um, it stains, so even if you wick it away afterwards with a clean brush, you're still going to have an effect of sort of a, a stained, darker color over this yellow. There's, I cannot express my frustration with working with yellow to try and paint this ship. It was um, truly a travail worthy of a uh, legend. If you guys have yellow paints that you strongly recommend, or any tips for working with yellow paints to make them cover better, to make them look nicer, please let me know. As far as I've found, it's largely just running my head into a wall, painting a lot, lots of layers, lots of coats, and just use the best paint I can find, which is uh, not satisfying, but at least it worked. So now let's get into the things that make a tall ship a tall ship and not just another miniature soldier, and that's rigging, sails, and flags. First off, big thank you to Warlord Games for having a rigging tutorial, <laughs> but I'll... I'll touch on that in a minute here. The tools you're going to want are the actual rigging twine. You're going to want some tweezers. I have two different sets of tweezers for different circumstances because this is very fine work. Uh, you also want some sort of little applicator for your super glue so that you can apply small amounts of super glue to all the knots and make sure they keep. And of course scissors that you can use for cutting the twine. Now, Warlord Games' rigging tutorial is very in-depth, and their video is, is quite long as a result, um, but it did walk me through all of the steps of rigging up the ship, as uh, per the rule books for Black Seas. 
One of the biggest tips I can give is pre-tie knots like this and just keep the loop open and you can slide them over the masts and as they repeat repeatedly inside that uh, Warlord Games rigging tutorial, make sure you always tie everything above the yards, that's the horizontal bits of the masts, so that your sails can actually still get glued on. That being said, there are some problems with the uh, Warlord Games rigging tutorial insofar as uh, it didn't really give me anywhere to properly hang my flags and it didn't really allow me to hang the jibs at the front of the ship. Unfortunately, it was only once I'd encountered those issues that I uh, went and searched elsewhere than Warlord Games' channel for tutorials, but hopefully I can save you the trouble this time. Warlord Games' tutorial is perfectly fine for rigging that gives you the impression of realism, but there is a channel called DZ Saber, or DZ Saber for all you Americans out there who watch. Uh, I've got it written down in the comments so that you can find it yourself uh, by name if you want to. And he's got quite a lot of tutorials on rigging and sails and flags for Black Seas that are in great depth and very helpful. I strongly recommend you go and look for those um, if you're going to work on any Black Seas ships. My final tip here with the rigging, you can see I put my anchors up forward and they're in the way of this last bit of the rigging. Um, so I'm just going to put some glue on the sides and sort of just tack this on. If you end up with the same issue, this kind of works. You just need to not tug too hard and make sure you put enough glue on to really hold the lines in place. But yeah, go check out DZ Saber for better tutorials on this process because mine was a little bit muffed. Again, Warlord Games' tutorial does give you a good looking set of rigging that was fairly simple and their tutorial is very easy to follow. But let's talk now about the areas where it fell a little bit short. Sails and flags are super important to the look of a tall ship, so you're going to want to get these guys right, and they have provided you with cardboard sails. These are a bit weird, they tear away funny, uh, they come out decently well, but there'll be little strands you need to clean up on the sides, and I noticed uh, as I was recording the audio for this that I didn't manage to clean up all of the little stringy bits. But anyway, test fit them before you put them on. Make sure, see here, if the rigging had been below the yard at the top there, it would have been blocking the sail from going on. So make sure you test fit everything. And then give your sails a little bit of a billow by just wrapping them around some round object. If you do it with your fingers because it's cardboard, they're going to crease and they're going to get this sharp crease right in the middle of them. I did it to one of mine. Um, that doesn't look very good. So use some sort of round jig to actually uh, billow them outwards. Then again, test fit, and you're going to be basically gluing the entire top of the sail onto the yard, and then the corners at the bottom of the sail onto the lower yard, if uh, that makes any sense. These sails, uh, I would replace them with something if I could, but I couldn't come up with a good replacement uh, in the time I spent making this video. So if you have good ideas for how to make nicer looking sails than just the cardboard ones, absolutely let me know, I'm super interested. That being said, these cardboard sails are perfectly adequate for just making the look of a ship. They just, I find they don't match that well with the aesthetic of the rest of the ship. When everything's hand painted and there's one part that's printed, it kind of stands out a little bit. But it's what they gave us. And uh, again, if you're trying to put these ships on the tabletop, this does very, very well. Tucking in the corners like that with some glue is quite solid and all of my sails held on very well. Um, but then you're going to get to the jib sails, which is to say the sails up forward on the ship. I think I'm using the right words. Um, I'm a sailor, but not of that kind of ship, if that makes any sense. Um, arrange them in order of largest to smallest, with the smallest going closest to the ship and the largest going furthest out from the ship. And you're going to be trying to hang them from some of the lines here. Now. Ideally, there would be lines above and below each of these jib sails for them to stick to so they could be sort of held in place uh, at each of the three corners. That's what holds them taut as they billow outwards. Uh, but the way this is rigged, those aren't available. So using tweezers and a lot of muttering and good luck, you're going to have to end up just sort of dangling the sails from the top if you ended up with the rigging arrangement that I have here. Uh, it's not ideal, especially when after tightening up all of the rigging as you go along, some of the earlier lines get a little loose. That's not the tutorial's fault, that's my fault, and that's just something you gotta watch out for, I guess. Because these masts are soft plastic, so they bend, so everything gets sort of pulled taut the more you put on, and all the early ones get kind of wobbly, like that line there. It's really hard to get the sails to hang off of that. Um, surprisingly so, anyway. 
So as you go through, just sort of keep that in mind. And uh, ideally, yeah, if you find one of the other tutorials by DZ Saber useful, maybe you can use that to um, make a rigging arrangement that actually suspends your sails on both sides instead of having them sort of dangle and flop around like mine ended up doing. For the foremost sail, I was able to sort of get the after corner to stick to the sail just aft of it, um, which connects the two together and gives them at least a little more stability. Um, but that join broke shortly thereafter because it is glue on paper. So, you know, I do what I can, but uh, that's that for the sails. As far as flags go, I again ran into some issues uh, with actually attaching them. For identifying the flags though, pretty simple. I grabbed a picture of HMS Indefatigable off of Wikipedia, took a look at the flags that she was flying at the time of her engagement with the Droit de l'Homme, and uh, I went to the actual flag sheet provided by Warlord Games and found what I thought to be the closest facsimiles. The flag sheet's very complete and has flags of different sizes for each of the different rates of ship, so make sure you look in the frigate row if you're planning to make a frigate. That way you don't get uh, the very humongous ensign meant for the first rate, although I guess that would probably look good anyway. The three flags I'm going to go with are the white ensign, the corresponding pennant, and the union jack. Uh, and I'm just going to fly those, basically two of them from the masts, so that is the pennant and the union jack, and the white ensign from back aft. And this is where, again, some of the issues come in. The flags themselves are just paper, so they're typical sort of fold them up and glue them however you want. I think a glue stick would have worked quite well for this. Um, I ended up using super glue because I wanted it to stick faster onto the actual line. But the super glue ended up sticking a little bit and tearing the paper flags, so it's not necessarily the best idea. However you end up doing it, it's a pretty familiar process. Test fit the pieces, then fold them in half and tuck them around the line that they're supposed to attach to. You can see here the issue with the lines on the masts. They don't go all the way up to the top. They don't go above the sails, basically. They kind of just reached just above the yard. And that's partly me not tying them high enough, I think. If I really glued them right on the top of the sails, then the flags would have flown above the sails. As it is, they're shielded behind the sails, which doesn't look very good in my opinion. But it is what it is. At the stern of the ship, uh, I added another line in order to be able to attach the ensign, because this wasn't part of the normal rigging arrangement. Um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a historical line, but uh, it was sufficient for the ensign to fly off the stern of the ship, as intended. I put a little bit of a curve into it, so it looks like it's billowing in the wind, and then I tuck it through, and again with super glue, I just connected it that way. Again, glue stick might work well, but uh, super glue just glues really fast, so that's kind of nice. Using a red sharpie, I touch up the edges of the flags. This just, uh, I mean, the sharpie doesn't hydrate it too much, so it's not like putting paint on and wetting the flag, which will cause it to warp. Uh, but it does cover everything with red and make the flags lose that sort of white edge they have because they're folded paper. And with that done, uh, the ship is effectively complete. So there are some issues here, and there were quite a few lessons learned, uh, as I hope I conveyed to you here. Um, jumping into tall ships sort of unprepared, uh, might not be necessarily the best idea, but I figured, hey, why not? I'll give it a shot and I'll learn what I learn. So this is HMS Indefatigable. I'm pretty happy with her altogether. Uh, there were quite a few issues in the process, but I definitely learned some things that I can use to apply to for my next video. I'm going to take this time again to appreciate the tutorials that I found that helped me out with making this ship, and that is the Warlord Games rigging tutorial. Again, I've pointed out a few of the issues I had with it, but those aren't deal-breaking by any means. The rigging still looks good. Um, and if you pay attention to sort of the tautness of your lines, maybe you won't have the sort of wiggly lines in the middle like I do. So it's fine, uh, but for really any in-detail work on the rigging, sails, and flags for these ships, DZ Saber, the channel, had some very good videos that I saw, and um, I do recommend it. If you've worked on tall ships in this scale or thereabouts and you've got some tips and tricks on rigging, sails, flags, that kind of stuff, the hard stuff that makes a tall ship a tall ship, absolutely let me know. I'm super interested because I've got a whole box of these guys to make. If you've got tips on how to make sails that look nicer than these cardboard sails in particular, I tried Pepier Mache, it didn't work out, but hey, you got anything? Let me know. I'm super interested. If you do have questions or comments about the painting process, please let me know as well. I try to answer as many of the comments as I can as a, you know, matter of course. Um, and I really appreciate all of the engagement. With all that being said, thank you very much for watching. And as usual, go play some games.